tell you a little bit about me so you know why I'm here, why they asked me to come talk to you. Um, I actually, my first job out of college was working for a cable access TV station, so my background is in nonprofit. Uh, and I made a documentary over in England in 2002. I was a young 20 something kid, got grant money to the cameraman over there. Um, I've wanted to have my own business in video production since I was 15. So I literally have no plan B for my life except to do video, which is a good thing because I went to school for it. Um, that documentary I won a national award for in 2003. And the following year, um, I just decided I wanted to have my own business in video production, and so I was just going to go ahead and start it. And I literally went to Target and bought a desk for $100 and came back home, set it up next to my bedroom. I can roommate, so. Um, and I started posting on a website called Craigslist. Is anybody here familiar with that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had no website. I didn't have any equipment. I just had my desk and, and I just started posting and managed to convince the first few people to hire me and I took out a credit card with 0% interest um, and worked part-time for two years and had a full-time job on top of that. Um, so really, Skillman Video Group was born in 2005. And little notes to me, that same year, uh, YouTube was also born. So very good timing. Um, and YouTube also happens to completely revolutionize the way people can communicate. Um, not least of which they had developed or really forwarded a video playback system called Flash. Have you guys heard of Flash? It's now, of course, passe. Do not do Flash. It's evil. It's horrible. But then, I mean, before that, if you had video on your website, you had to have like a QuickTime player or Windows Media Player. If you guys remember, go back that far, it was really clunky and awkward. And so this just kind of made it possible for a young woman who started her business out of her bedroom to even have a chance at starting a business from nothing. Uh, I went full time in 2007. By the end of that year, I had signed Yamaha as a client which is one of the largest uh, music companies in the world. And the only way that I was able to even get a chance at that was because of the internet. It is the greatest democratization <laughs> device out there for anyone who's willing to have their story be told. Um, so by 2009, or the end of 2008, I don't know if any of you remember this, but this, you know, the stock market crash, the economic crisis, it was a great time to be working for yourself. <laughs> uh, in the marketing sphere in particular, which is just, it just so happened that my background in documentary production is just very relevant to online video, right? Because it's all about storytelling. It's less about selling and more about telling the story. So it just kind of was like natural giftings for me, and that's just kind of organically the way that my business flowed. Well, if you think anybody was spending money on video, <laughs> in 2008, 2009, 2010. No, they weren't. <laughs> Life got really hard. Um, but I invested at the time uh, in a new website in something called WordPress. Are you guys familiar with WordPress? Um, and I just very serendipitously, again, met someone who did SEO. Hopefully some of you just attended his workshop on SEO, so you're familiar. Um, and he thankfully needed someone who could do video work, so we just kind of partnered up. and. We started doing um, a lot of the techniques, which I'm sure you learned about and we'll be talking about later this afternoon. We started blogging, we started doing landing pages, we started creating video content for ourselves. Um, and I can tell you that by the end of 2011, we had had our best year to date. And the economy was crap, still, in 2011. But by putting ourselves out there on Google, it stopped waiting for the phone to ring magically, someone to like refer me or someone to find my Craigslist posting. It sounds creepy now, but I promise you that wasn't <laughs> creepy. Um, and it just allowed more people to find out that I existed. So we had our best year ever last year. We're going to guarantee that we're best year ever today. And it's in large part because people find out who we are because of this little thing called the internet. And of course, they know you, they hire you, and then they refer you, and then they hire you again. So it's just a great way to organically kind of grow your business. Uh, but why is video so important? You know, why are we doing so well today? Um, 
Have you guys heard of Forrester Research? So this was, they did some research on video on the web, and one of the reports says that uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, well they take it one step further, and they actually said that one minute video is worth about 1.8 million, million words. That is the equivalent of 3,600 typical web pages. Do you guys do SEO currently? How many of you do SEO? Sort of? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you're doing SEO, which I strongly suggest that you do it because it works, um, that's a lot of pages for you guys to be writing. Um, and that's 150 days of writing to achieve the impact of one minute of video. Um, this is 45.4%, that's the percentage of internet users who view at least one video online over the course of a month. Um, average users, 32.2 videos in a month. 100 million internet users watch online video every day, and if you're marketing towards consumers, that's particularly relevant to you. 90% um, of online shoppers at a major retail website, they find video helpful in making shopping and buying decisions. I find that really helpful. Do you guys sell products? In particular, no. Okay. Um, this one for those of you who are B two B, seventy five percent of executives told Forbes that they watch work related videos on a business website at least once a week. And a lot of videos are probably not work related. Right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, they have to make some look good. Come on. <laughs> um, and then according to Forbes, fifty nine percent of those are senior executives who rather watch a video than read text. That's a really large percentage. 65% um, visit the marketer's website after viewing a video. Of those visitors, 50% took look for more information. 45% 45 report that they contacted the vendor after seeing an online video ad. Um, and 50% of those who viewed an online marketing video went on to make a purchase for their business. So those are some pretty compelling numbers that if you have video on your site, people are going to watch it, and more importantly, they're going to take action after they finish watching it. Much more so than if you just put a bunch of text on a page, right? I mean, other reports say that you have 5%, uh, you have five seconds when somebody lands on your website, if they like it or if they don't like it, if they don't see something that's gonna catch their eye, they're gonna bounce. So the best SEO plan in the world only works so well if they're coming to your website and they're not finding content that they like. So these numbers suggest that if you have video on your website, they're probably going to stick around and watch it, which is what you want. You want people on your site for as long as possible. So we're going to talk a little bit now about content strategy because we've just gave you some really compelling numbers as far as why video on your website should be really important. Um, but too many times companies just start to throw out a bunch of videos and they don't really take the time to do the prerequisite soul searching to understand why you should be doing video, what your target should be. Um, so really taking the time to understand the end from the beginning uh, is gonna really set your company up for success with your video marketing campaign. Um, you'd be surprised how many times people call me and just say, we want a video. Well, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> what do you want it to do for you? So defining success uh, for you is actually hugely important because success will look different depending upon what kind of industry you are in. Um, if you're marketing towards consumers, if you're marketing towards a business, you know, what are you looking for? Are you looking for engagement? Are you looking for social media likes? Are you looking for forwards? Are you looking for more people to pick up the phone and call? I think you and your marketing team have got to have those conversations and say, when people are done watching this video, what do we want them to do? What do we want them to say? How do so we want them to feel? How detailed does that need to be? Because one of the struggles I'm having is they want a full storyboard from start to finish before they will pick up the video. And I'm finding that extremely difficult. I kind of turn back to them and be like, I don't do this for a living. Uh, I need you to create a storyboard. Uh, I just want more people to sign up. And they're like, well, that's not detailed enough. Go find somebody else. Um, so how detailed should it be? I would never say that to a potential client ever. 
I, I got it three times. So it's uh, from three different companies. Three different companies. Yeah. They expect you to do a storyboard. Yeah, they expect the storyboard. Uh, at I least a nice asked. outline of what it's going to be. Um, and I'm just like, I have no idea. I don't do video. I don't have a creative bone in my body. Like, don't make me do this, please. Like, I don't know. I want people to be excited after watching the video. They want to become a member. They want to become a sponsor. Or they want to become a, a vendor to do these activities. And I want them, like, to do this. I said, it's not that tough. People jumping out of airplanes. Like, it can't be that difficult. But um, they're, uh, yeah, I have a big struggle with that. So I'm wondering how detailed does that need to be? Because that's the question to you. So it, it, and it depends on what kind of video production company hiring. Some people just want to do video, right? They don't want to have to understand the end from the beginning. <laughs> they want you to understand the end from the beginning. And then they just come in and do it, right? Um, I would never ask someone to do a storyboard. I would ask you, show me a bunch of links of videos that you like online. Okay. Like, I want to see, because what that tells me as a creative is who are you? What do you like as the business owner? Um, and from there, I can say, okay, to give you a video that looks like this, it's going to cost you approximately X, Y, Z. And then from there, we kind of develop the pitch together. Um, I think it is helpful for you to have an idea of what you want the video to look like. I don't think it is unrealistic to me for you to know how to get there. Okay. okay. Uh, but if you don't even know what you like, then we're going to end up throwing a bunch of stuff up on the wall and hoping it sticks. Right. And you're just going to be like, I hate that, I hate that, I hate that. So um, style-wise, we'll talk a lot about the creative process too. But a great first step for you is to look what your competitors are doing. Understand who your audience is. Um, I think that's another important piece that people forget is at the end of the day, as marketers, we have to know it's not about us. Right? It's about our it's about our customers. What are they saying? What are they doing? So uh, who are they? What's their demographic? Where where are they hanging out? Which wh which social media sites are they on? What kind of videos are they watching? And that can also help us kind of backwards engineer what kind of content we should be doing for you. Um, so when I do say this, when I talk about success, I'm not actually asking you to have a clear script yet for the video, though that can be helpful for us for us, but. Um, you should have a vague idea of what the message should be. Um, a lot of times, people don't even aren't even sure what their story is. So, and you know, this is sometimes surprising to me too. It's like, or they get so caught up in how great their product is and what it can do. And I think there's a time and a place for content that's really technical or really procedural or informational like that. Um, but don't underestimate the value of what your story is. Because really, at the end of the day, uh, people are going to hire you or not hire because they like you or not. Like, they want to know that you can do the job, they want to know that you're professional, they want to know that you're experts. But if you can add that human touch to your website, to your marketing material, the idea is that they get to see themselves in your story. And I think if you can have that emotional connection, not just intellectual connection, but the emotional connection, they're going to be much more likely to want to engage with you and pick up the phone and call you. And the goal of any kind of online marketing scheme, the best SEO in the world, um, yeah, they're coming to my site. They have to like what they see. They have to trust that we know enough that they're going to pick up the phone and call. And after that, it's still on me. So you're never going to away completely from the emotion of the human connection. But all you can do is give a really great first impression that's going to convince them that they that you are an expert, you're really good at it, um, and that they want to do business with you, at least enough to talk to you. So example of what potential goals might be for your video marketing campaign. Um, and these are important for you to know because this will impact what types of video you want to do. Um, so enhancing SEO, and, and how many of you guys do, are doing SEO? I know you showed me earlier, but just show me again. Okay. And we'll go into like different video types in a little bit, but if your goal is to boost SEO, that's gonna completely change what kind of video content you should be doing. Okay. Um, if your goal is to increase social media likes, engagement, if you want people to share it, sometimes people get really hung up on this whole it's gotta go viral thing. Um, 
I'll tell you straight off the bat, that's really hard to actually pull off. I'm not saying it's impossible, <laughs> but um, any company that can guarantee that for you is probably lying to you. <laughs> um, but the idea being that if you're just doing it to get some social media mentions, uh, that might be entirely different content that you want to be creating. And that's what, it, for the B2C people, that would definitely be speaking to you um, because consumers have much different viewership habits than B2B people, than, than an executive would, okay? Um, so maybe the point of your video is to just sell or inform people about very specific technical aspects of your product. Um, and I think there's a time and a place for that. I'm not saying across the board, there's ever, no video should ever say this, and no video should ever say that. I don't ever believe that. I think there's room for all types of video, including videos that you guys make yourselves with your iPhones, okay? <laughs> I just think that people should be doing video. I believe in video. Um, so sometimes it is appropriate to have like really technical product videos too. If, if your whatever piece of equipment you're selling uh, calls for that. Um, you know, one of the most important things that I always tell people to start with is, is of course their brand story. Who are you? Everyone can find out what it is that you do, but who are you? What makes you different? What makes you unique? Why are you so passionate about that? And I think what I think is so cool about video is they're not just reading. We are passionate about what we do. Like, they're seeing your eyes talk about it, and there's like fire in your belly. Um, that's something that, that the video medium can communicate so much more so than photography even. Uh, certainly the printed page or anything like that. Um, the creative process. And I'm going to be showing you this video later. So this is a little preview. We just did a shoot where things were actually blowing up. Yay! It's really cool. <laughs> Thank you. The creative process. So I just want to say this about the creative process. Like a lot of times we do stuff for like businesses and everybody's used to like the spreadsheet mentality <laughs> where everything's linear. Um, I just want to say if you guys work with other creatives and you know, graphic designers or whatever, uh, the creative process is not always a straight line. And you kind of have to be comfortable with that. Um, I trust the process. Like as long as you're hiring a creative person that you like their aesthetic, again, you liking something is extremely important. If you do not like their past work, do not hire them. Because that is what you are doing, right? Um, so I think you have to trust them. I think you have to both be committed to, to completing the project. Uh, and I think I prefer it at least when it's extremely collaborative. So I don't like it if I'm brought on and I'm told, you know, this is what I want, X, Y, Z. Because then I'm just a body, <laughs> right? Um, but I also don't like it when it's the other extreme and people are like, oh, we don't know what we want. Do, give, a, give us whatever you think. I don't care. Because sooner or later, like I said, you end up throwing a bunch of stuff up at the wall and it all comes crashing down and, and it, it becomes the project, which should be three months, ends up being six months. So there has to be that thought between, this is the kind of video that we like, take a look at it, and understanding that your video is going to be unlike anybody else's video because it's your video, it's your story. Um, but I do think some basic concept of what graphic style you like is helpful. Like I was explaining earlier, I don't think it's harmful to go online and look what your competitors are doing. Maybe even a totally different industry, but you're saying, I really love like the pace of this video. I like how it was shot. Uh, I like the kind of music they used. We're not saying that so that you're going to have like a direct ripoff of that. It's just, again, it's telling us what you like. Um, again, what kind of energy should it have? Do you want it fast paced? Do you want it more slow? There is no right or wrong answer, guys. Okay? But just know that everything you do, everything, all of your content, this does not just include your video, but it's communicating something about your brand. So if you know, it's really fast paced with like flashy graphics and music. You're communicating something about who, who your company is, right? Just like if it's really slow and plotting, that might be okay. Maybe you want more gravitas, right? Maybe you want that sense that this is serious. We are a serious company. There is no right or wrong answer, but just be aware that everything that you do, everything you're putting out there, um, is communicating about who you are, right? Um, so again, just to reiterate, take that time before you bring on your video crew to understand 
you know, why you're trying to create, what are you trying to create, and why are you trying to create it. 